Hi guys, this is Alex from a &R Design and we are gonna go over how to set up your link rifle sling on your weapon system. We're only gonna be talking about the AR-15 style platform today and there's a bunch of different stocks obviously that you can put on your AR-15 and I'll go over how I have it set up on this BCM gunfighter stock. But a lot of the rear end of the sling mounting solutions that you might come across is comes down to personal preference and how you wanna operate your sling. So today we're gonna to start with the front of the weapon system first. I currently have it set up in my configuration, but we're going to reverse this and also show you two different paracord tricks for your weapon system, as well as how to set up your loose end through the tri-glide and the best practices on getting it super tight for uh, QD swivels. So right now we'll just undo it. We have a Neomag sentry strap that I'm using to retain the sling to the handguard. And this is a product that we sell on our website, Neomag designs and makes them, but we provide them on our website and you can add this to your order if you purchase our sling from the website. So we're just gonna undo the magnet. Right now I have it plugged into a QD swivel on the front of the gun with a, this is a Picatinny mounted QD receptacle. But we're going to ignore that because we're going to go through how to set this up on your swivel and then we'll undo it again and we'll do it with paracord. So I'm just going to loosen it up off the tri-glide. And when I like to mount my slings, I like to put my QD swivel in place. You want about three and a half to four inches of loose end. You're gonna go through the swivel. And I like to tuck the swivel underneath the front of the tri-glide and kind of pinch it in place. Get it up in there. And then when you tighten it down, you want that swivel to live underneath the tri-glide. Then you're gonna go back through the tri-glide towards the rear of the firearm, like so. And then because this is a loose end, we do not bar tack these ends because we do like you to have an extra, the, the ability to do an extra loop through the tri-glide, which ensures that it's never gonna loosen up. Sometimes when slings have a folded over end like this where they bar tack it, if there's enough tension being pulled on the sling, there is a potential for it to slip back through. And when it is bar tacked, it's very difficult to get it back through the tri-glide effectively to keep it secure. So this is why we leave them loose end, not bar tacked. And then I like to roll, roll the swivel forward, slide the loose end of the sling back through, forward towards the weapon, uh, the muzzle of the weapon system, pull it nice and tight, and then you can pull it rearward and you can see there's no slip and it's completely taut within the QD swivel at the front. So with that same technique, we're gonna set up paracord and we're gonna do paracord two ways. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the paracord in two places on the weapon system to simulate two potential ways to run paracord. They're not the most ideal sling locations because I have the, um, my laser system and my switches here, but this is how you would set it up. So we have some wolf gray paracord. I'm gonna do one through the front, through the handguard. Now this is not always the most ideal way to run uh, paracord because depending on your weapon system and how hot you're running your gun, it may get too hot. And because the paracord is sitting against your barrel, uh, it could start to melt your paracord. So this is one way to do it, but not always the most ideal. So when you, when you have your, you just wanna do like a, a square knot. So right over left, left over right. For those who went to Boy Scouts. Get it nice taut. Sometimes when you wanna, when you wanna ensure that you're, you, uh, you don't want your knot to loosen up, it's also good to heat up the knot itself. So we'll use this butane torch here. Try not to melt the table. Cancer. And then I like to just kiss the knot itself with a little bit of heat. <laughs> Let that cool real quick. And that's just so that the exterior sleeve 
of the paracord hardens and there's no slippage of the knot. The other way to run paracord is to go around the handguard completely and then choose, we'll do it this way just so you can see it. I'll move it to a, a location that you can see really nicely. So getting it really tight to the handguard and using the actual slot in the 1913 Picatinny rail to keep your paracord in place. But this will ensure that you get it nice and tight to the rail and then you can thread your sling through afterwards. So we'll go to this side so I can operate the best. Now you can also do the paracord trick on the rear of the weapon system in the back of the gun. Sometimes people like to have paracord hang down at the back of the gun so that the sling has some slack and sway left to right. So if you're transitioning between shoulders, the sling is free to swivel. But I'll show you that afterwards. So square knot. I'm keeping this nice and tight to the handguard. So now you have your little knot set up here. Just how you hid, just how you tucked the back of the swivel under the tri-glide, that's exactly what we're gonna do with this. It's exactly what we're gonna do with this paracord. So the knot is now sandwiched in this little taco of nylon webbing. Now because it doesn't have a swivel, it's gonna be a little bit more difficult to get it super tucked. So I'm gonna hold it like that, get it through the back, pull it nice and tight. So now the knot is completely hidden under the tri-glide. And then you're just gonna to have to Run it and just take your time. Pull it nice and tight. Now, over time, paracord does loosen up as that nylon stretches. So before you install your nylon, maybe give it some really, really good tight tugs. Get it stretched out a little bit before mounting it if you're going all the way around the rail. Um, this style of mounting for the front of the sling is also great for quad rails. So when you have the Picatinny all the way around, so you have that nice groove the whole way around the weapon system. But that's one way to secure your sling. It stays on that knot pretty well. Sometimes it'll slide off, but because it's so tight on that knot, the paracord has a little bit more availability to swivel rather than off the knot. So that's how you mount it to the handguard and around it. And this is ideal if you're running a shorter gun that gets hot. You don't want your paracord to melt. Um, if it's a weapon system that you're not running that hard, you could mount it through the actual handguard this way and um, have it be a little bit more neat and not as, you know, not have as much play on it. So you can do it the other way as well. And we'll just quickly run through that. Now I prefer to run my sling at the farthest two points on the gun that I physically can. So you'll see that I have my my m -lock, um, you'll see that I have my QD swivel insert really far up on the weapon system. And that's because my hand's gonna sit back here behind the sling. If I'm running the sling and I wanna put tension, I can put my hand over the sling and a plethora of other ways to manage um, shooting from barricades and other things. It's nice to have the sling way up front because it gives you extra slack to uh, use, do sling manipulation. So same deal, nice and tight over the paracord. And then don't forget to go 
back through to the front. This might be redundant for what we just did, but it's always good to show it a few times. So there you go. Now that's paracord mounted to the front of the sling and the weapon system. And it has a little bit of ability to swivel and this will depend on your handguard. But this PWS Mark 111 Mod 2 has lots of open windows on the handguard. So you get a little bit of swiveling action. So we'll go back to mounting it to the QD swivel and then we'll go talk about the rear of the weapon system. All right, so now we'll move to the rear of the system. All right, so the rear of the sling, I'm not gonna take this down because it's kind of a nightmare to get set up. Actually, I'll disconnect it from the front so you can see why. All right, so I'm a right-handed shooter. So the weapon system is gonna be up against my body here. And again, I like to have the sling as far back as possible. Because I'm mostly shooting from the right, I like to have the rubber butt pad of my stock clean against my shoulder, for the most part. It depends on the stocks that you're running. On the Nevesky N4 that you sometimes see on our page, the sling actually loops around the back and hooks on here. Uh, for this BCM gunfighter, it leaves the way I have the sling tethered, leaves the back completely exposed. The gunfighter has a very, it has a slot that goes this way. So you can go and you can see there's a little, there's a little imprint here. So you can run the sling over and around that way. You have a QD insert here. So if you were to put, you know, you had this, a QD on the rear, you could plug your QD here. In this configuration, I don't know if this, yeah, there we go. And it could go over the system that way, just like that, if you're running it how I'm running it. But I don't really like the QD in the rear. I like this little loopy loop that I have back here. So because the sling slot goes this way, I, I have the sling kind of loops through and then back into itself so that when it sits on my shoulder, it hangs and it's exposed. And you can see there's that side, there's this side, and then underneath there's like a little twist. So it's a, it's a little bit of um, mental origami to get it to this configuration on the BCM gunfighter stock, but this is my preferred location on the BCM gunfighter stock, and I don't feel like taking it down because it's a pain in the butt. So on our link sling, that's how you set it up on the front and rear of the weapon system. The Link Sling itself does have a removable shoulder pad. So if you're running this on an AK, which is also, uh, most of the AKs are a receiver mounted swivel. Some of them are on the stock, depending whether it's a triangular folding stock. So it'd be forward on the stock, or if it's a standard fixed um, wood or polymer stock, it might be on the end. So, Depending on your weapon system, you can buy these slings that have really long padded sections and they're usually 500D Kodora because they want them to be durable. And 500D Kodora on a crew neck t-shirt in the summer for an eight hour class can really, really beat you up. Our slings have this elastic material. You'll recognize it, you'll see it around the knee pads on the Cry Precision pants. This was a Gen 1 prototype, but the factory ones, this material actually goes up over this radius to be softer on your neck. We decided to only go with a 12 inch shoulder pad because depending on the weapon system, you may not want all that extra pad. It's easier to coil your sling up and use a sling retention device like a sentry strap or an elastic band. So you can individually place your shoulder pad where you want it per the weapon system. So on AKs, this is gonna run somewhere more forward. On ARs, it's gonna run more rear. So you can move this anywhere you want that makes sense for you. 
So let's move it rearward for the sake of this discussion. We do have some accessories for the link. We have our tourniquet pouch, which is a tri-fold, just like our shoulder pad. If this was a truck specific gun, you might just grab it and go and forget your med kit or not have a med kit on you. And this is an emergency in the vehicle type weapon. You might want to put your tourniquet on your sling. It tri-folds and it utilizes the three quarter inch soft Velcro that we have for the shoulder pad. So we, lay, we left extra Velcro. This Velcro feeds through the tri-glides, no problem. And we have this accessory that you can run on your weapon system and have a tourniquet ready to go. Not videoed here, but we do have a Little Roo tool pouch, which is essentially the same configuration as this, but has a small uh, elastic sheath with a small elastic sheath cover. And if this was like a special purpose rifle build, something for like a Recondo job, and you wanted to keep an extra Allen key or a half inch drive to tighten down your scope rings or your scope mount just in case it loosens up in the field. We have that little tool pouch that also Velcros onto your sling and it's the same profile as the actual sling shoulder pad. So it becomes a seamless transition between your shoulder pad and the tool pouch. And these can be all found on our website, but that is how you configure your rifle sling on your AR-15.